And welcome back, everybody. Uh, tonight, we are playing Candlekeep Mystery. <laughs> Say hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. And hello back to all. We are happy to be here as we are playing uh, a wonderful tale called Alcazar's Appendix. It's a great story, if you've read it. And soon, together, we will all have read it. So, why don't we go ahead and get started. Before we get too far going, though, why don't we all say hi and introduce each other? Why don't we start with uh, the person on the far left, who is uh, Nathan. Please introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Nathan. I will be playing Baos, a Warforged wizard. Wandy, wonderful. All right, Ellie. Hi, I'm Alicia. I will be playing Zyla, a mirrorless. Wonderful. And r r uh, James? Hi, I'm James, and I am playing the Phantom Rogue, Rose. Wonderful, and I am your Dungeon Master Dill, and we are so ready to read some nerdy books and get going, oh, so yeah. let us not even wait. Each of you have been brought here for a reason. You have found yourselves journeying however long it takes for you, for you have been spread across our lovely continent of Faerun, the lovely world of Faerun, I don't fucking know. But you've been spread across it. And now you are coming to a place you have been before. A place known as Candlekeep. It is a land of lost lore. It is a castle-like structure south of Baldur's Gate that holds both knowledge and secrets that you have, well, maybe brushed in your careers. Each of you have been contacted by none other than Little One, the wise ogre which calls Candlekeep his home for the most part, residing at none other than the Hearth, the tavern here. It is to this location that you now find yourself drawn to. Each of you, in turn, perhaps close to one another, perhaps close to one another, or perhaps not, make your way into the heart. This is from the outside an innocuous structure. It looks uh, like a tavern, perhaps smaller than you would expect for such a well-known location. Except upon entering, it is very clear that some form of extra-dimensional magic has been used here in this inside expands readily to host probably easily 50 100 plus people not only that but lining uh this this uh lining this very busy tavern is a doors each of them leading you probably know to either a a shrine of some sort or to a meeting chambers this is an active place but Kind of commanding the intention of the room uh, simply by his being there. You can tell you that it's a very split attention, though. Those that wear kind of like the purplish robes of Candlekeep or, or who like look like they've been here a bit. They're like paying no heed to this individual. While maybe like the newer people that have just got here are like, ooh, what's going on? They're like the visitors of Candlekeep seeking info. Um, they, <laughs> You are looking at none other than Little One. Now, Little One is, of course, a tall nine foot ogre hand skin um wearing you know kind of these classic leathers except for um this headband around his head um very intricate kind of this gold pattern um and as each of you in turn kind of steps into the room he reaches out to you um his voice carries across this crowded room and although no one really stops it kind of like you hear the record go a little bit, you know? 
Um, uh, excuse me, travelers. I see you have received my message. Uh, please, please, uh, come close to the table. I have quite a story to tell you. It is good to see you again. And you, Baos. Uh, I hope you don't mind these rushed words and uh, bringing you here unannounced without much fanfare. I, I just know that there is, is much to be done here and uh, you three individuals are three of, well, the strongest and, and most uh, dedicated individuals I know. And so I hope that you will do me this favor, but I I'm sorry, I'm babbling. Um, you all know me, but perhaps not each other. Uh, uh, this is, is Baos, and he motions to the Warforge. This is Zyla, and he motions to the Maryland. And this is Rose, and he motions towards... Rose, are you a human? Yes. I, the human. <laughs> um, now, I hope you can... Ah. Sorry. I'm sorry. I, uh, I hope you don't mind uh, bumping shoulders for just a little bit uh, and doing me this favor, but please um, look at this tome. And he slides out in front of you um, a book. It is a, 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 a nice book. You can see that it has this kind of like leather like appearance to it. It's, it's em uh, embossed with like this this filigree and the corners are even like very well done. Um, except that it, it, you can tell that it's, it's very obviously had some age to it and scrawled across the very top is, um, Alcazar's appendix. And he kind of just pushes it across the table to you guys. Um, Oh, yes. Um, it's quite an interesting tale. It came with this. And now the first book, you know, like this Alcazar's, Alcazar's Appendix, is probably only like a half inch, half inch thick. Um, but he just like slam and a second book hits the table. And this one's probably like a good, like, a, a, it's like a fucking foot, right? Same kind of book, same, oh. it looks the same way as the, uh, as the other one, except the title is Alcazar's Thrill Thrilling Tales. Um... And he says, uh, uh, together, these make up the work of Alcazar, uh, the hero who have roamed uh, our lands almost a hundred years ago. And uh, what an interesting tale they have uh, told. But this book, this larger one, and he kind of pushes it to the side, it's not what we're after. This one is appendix. That's so weird. Um... Uh, tells the only tale worth telling. It speaks of Alcazar's unfinished quest into, well, how about we just look at it and you can find out. Uh, um, would it be all right if I, if Baos made a history check? Uh, to, I know, uh, like we talked about, out. I am familiar with the name for sure, but do I know anything else about the book? Yeah, sure. Go ahead and uh, roll a history check. Anyone interested after hearing that, you're welcome to roll a history check. I think I might have heard something. Ooh, yeah, look at that. 25, a 20 for Baos. Ooh, Xyla, not so much. That's a four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one and a two. <laughs> that hurts. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's not, you know, maybe it's not your thing. But, uh... Yeah. So, yeah, you guys have heard about Alcazar. Now, Alcazar is a very interesting individual. Um, you guys know that... That's what you're you're looking for, right? What Alcazar... What's up with Alcazar? Uh, yes, and if I've uh, heard of anything... Uh, anything about the book recently. Okay, cool. So, been... yeah... Oh, sorry. Well, you're good, but cuckoo, cuckoo. So, uh, yeah, you you guys have um, not you have heard first of Alcazar, right? Alcazar is someone you know of. Um, he uh, 
wrote you you've heard that he's wrote these down these are like almost like his memoir slash maybe you don't know if it's maybe doctored a little bit because some of the tales are a little fantasy you know like pretty high uh but um it's kind of like his life's work right that first book uh, alcazar's thrilling tales it's kind of like the book that is given when you go to like hero ed 101 in high school they're like okay please read we're gonna flip to page uh, 267 of alcazar's thrilling tales right and you're fucking like looking up just like classic shit um Beos, maybe you've heard that you know there was a second book, Alcazar's Appendix, that went along with it. Um, chances of seeing it are pretty slim. It's it's only copy resides here in Candlekeep, and honestly, it's a it's a tome that is more passed around by word of mouth than anything else. But Rose, for whatever reason, you have heard of this before. And it rings a bell. You don't know why exactly. You don't know where you've may have may have come across it. Maybe um, in a mage's notes, or you know, on on the dying lips of someone. Uh, but that name, Alcazar's appendix, comes to you, and you know that, of course, this holds. Like little one said, the tale, the last tale of Alcazar's unfinished quest. But you know that this quest is in search of a very powerful magic item. It is rumored that Alcazar, before he gave up on this quest, it's the only quest that he gave up on, um, was after a fabled nether scroll. An item of such power that it can change, change one's perception of the weave and the ways of magic in fundamental ways that no one can understand. Uh, yes, but it's quite irresistible, to say the least. I've been thumbing through it over and over and over again, and I, I can say without a doubt that Alcazar was looking for a nether scroll. Hmm. Aye. Yes, an item of great power. And if you turn here, and he like flips through, through the a couple, a couple pages, and he points to a map of, of far east, and it's just like in this desert-like region. He's like, if you look, you can see that here in the Anorak Desert, he came across this wandering stone golem. Now, Alcazar believed that this golem was the legendary Sapphire Sentinel, rumored to be created by Netherese wizards to protect nether scrolls now it says here that the golem was under the control of prince hamukai and recognized his master's name it seemed that this golem even obeyed his commands when alcazar mentioned said name how interesting Pierce the Golem did not speak, but it communicated through sign language, and Alcazar notes that it seemed lost and sad. Why? And here near the end, you can see that he meets nomads, and he kind of flips through the pages. Uh, Betty nomads, and they have, uh, they had clues about the Golem, and except he speaks of it being in purple worm territory, and Sandst sandstorm obscured their route and his transport ran off and in the end with his guides gone and no way to move forward it seems that Alcazar ended his exposition expedition my exposition is still going <laughs> <laughs> now so so I am curious I assume you wish for us to return with one of the scrolls. Uh, yes, yes. And he kind of flips to the very, like, almost the last page. And he says, here, and you read it. It's in, in, like, all of you can kind of see it. It's like a, um, 
dear reader, right? And it's like uh, Alcazar goes on to say, like, this is such an important find to history. I am begging you, dear reader, to finish my quest if you're capable. And he just says, like, flip to the next fucking page, right? Yeah. And the slow flip just shows... Uh, what appears to be these like cryptic looking symbols surrounding an illustration of what you can only assume to be the golem um, and the, all these kind of like cryptic symbols you can see are like slowly dancing in place if your eyes are like look if you're trying to like look at them I um, mean you can Bayos, you can tell that they are very obviously magical well, um, and little one says uh, as you can see I'm not the only one who thinks this, this is important. Alcazar himself is practically begging us, and this tome found its way into my hands by chance. I am hoping that we can do some good with that knowledge. Hmm. We can. Now, are you absolutely certain that this is an accurate depiction of the goal? Uh... No, I, I think it's a rendering, but I I think there's something. And he kind of like he closes the book, right? And then he opens it back up just a little bit. Like he cracks the page uh -huh. and he like shakes it and a little bit of sand falls out onto the table. And he's like, I've done that hundreds of times and it always happens. Um, my? my power as a magist is not extremely strong and I was afraid to bring it to, well... This is a place with many ears. It's why I brought the three of you here. I know I can trust magic. You. Magic is very dangerous and easily corrupt. And so I was hoping one of you could take a look at it then. Well, I will attempt. Thank you, Bales. <laughs> okay, motherfucker, right, make so an arcana check. Yeah. Doing roll kind of two, Zyla? I have the same outcome with my history check. <laughs> oh no! No, that's pretty good. Yay. Yeah, nineteen. Yeah, you all look it over, and um, you realize that you know through your uh through your times as adventurers, um, you know probably all of you at some point has used some form of teleportation magic, right? And you can tell that these yeah. runes are very obviously of that nature, right? Like they, um, if encanted and spoke with the right words, which, uh, Baos, you know, you know, and, uh, oh. yeah. you could open this portal wherever it goes Fine. and it does seem to go somewhere. And, uh, and the little one's like, oh yes. Uh, and he flips a little bit back earlier and he goes, look, Alcazar says he inscribed a magical tracer on the golem hoping that he could find it again. This must lead to the golem. Ah, wonderful. In that case, I should be able to ritual cast this, and I am already starting to scrawl a teleportation circle. You don't even need to. You know that with a chant... Oh, okay. Yeah, with, uh, with Justin... Uh, it does take some time, but with like an hour of chanting, you could open this up, this magical tracer that he left, and appear exactly at the location... That it wants you to be at, that the golem is at, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I will express that to everyone and state that, uh, and just make a, a query uh, on whether or not we should be doing that here. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're right. I don't, you don't even need to take an, it's an hour to like learn what's up with it. You guys already learned what's up with it. Um, you can just open the fucking portal now. You're ready, dude. Ah, well. Dude. I'm, I'm ready to go. Will you be coming with us, little one? Uh, no, I'm. I'm afraid I put that, the more violent side of me behind. But I will very, very eagerly await your return, and I. I hope you know you. You do this not just for, the reward of knowledge that will be brought back here, but, uh, I, I'm good for it. Homies. Well, respectable and understandable. Um, and then 
Yeah, I'm gonna look. Is there any hesitation in the other two? None here. In, in my compatriots. You fucking ready to go, Zyla? Oh, definitely. She is just patiently waiting. Ah. Now, if I understand correctly, this could be in purple worm territory. So I will pull out my uh, staff and my left hand, hold open the book, and repeat and, and do the incantation. Okay, here we go. You, uh, is a very short amount of words. It's it's like, a, 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 it feels like a handful of garbled sounds fall out of Baos's mouth to the rest of you. And then this book tears itself open in front of you. And um, you're suddenly looking into a sucking portal um, that is just baking heat. Heat is just flowing out of it. It's hot on the other side of this portal, apparently, and you can feel it. Uh, those closest to Baos, you can feel the tug of this portal drawing you in and wanting you to move into it. Um, Baos, you know that this portal is only open for a short amount of time. Longer than most, probably only a minute, but uh, oh. long enough that you get, you need to not dally. I rose, jumps. All right, everyone through. I shall, wait, uh, I shall wait until the last second to make sure that you're not followed. Smart move. I just jumped in. Yeah, Rose is through. Xyla, you going through? Xyla's probably already slithering her way in. Perfect. In you go, and uh, Baos, with a watchful eye, you wait until the very last second that portal begins to close, and you slip in. All right. On the other side, as the portal disappears, and all of you feel this, like, sucking sound, or this uh, sucking sensation, and a sound, maybe, um, of you moving through a time, and all of a sudden, it feels like your bodies are being, like, shaken, and then you're turned upside down, and your guts are... Or like wrenched around and then boo, on the other side you appear and you are suddenly blinded and all of you have to like blink and close your eyes by this desert sun and you can feel that heat now it is trying to pull every bit of moisture from your body it is very very noticeable and not very kind in the slightest the bone dry air makes each breath burn. You can feel the hot and taste the baked earth around you. As you blink to get your vision back, you look around and you can see that below you, about 50 feet away, a camel watches as two desert nomads dressed in these long flowing clothes unearth a hulking stone golem half buried in the sand. You can see that they are so intent on their investigation of said golem that they don't notice your arrival. And how would I just show you what you see? Um, you said uh, we are 50 feet below or they are 50 feet below us. Are we in the air? Uh, you're not in the air. They're just like 50 feet away from you guys. They're, you're like on a dune rise and they're like down at the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. And you're looking around, you can just see there's there's desert everywhere around you. You know that this is the Anorak Desert. Well, it appears that someone has beaten us to the punch. Uh, you can look and uh, you can see that they're just two individuals. They just look like um, uh, from this distance, you can easily tell one of them appears to be like an older gentleman with a uh, like with a uh, not a cane, but like a walking stick and a younger individual, uh, probably in his uh, teens or early 20s um, uh, that kind of you can definitely see that they they share familial connections. Their facial features are very obviously the same. Um and both of them have like this uh, dark olive skin with this brown hair, and it just uh, is flowing outside of their their robes, which they have kind of pulled back right now. Okay. With a single camel. 
Hmm. All right, I'm gonna start approaching. Okay, so probably not a threat. Then. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna approach as well. Okay. I'm approaching as well. All right, all of you move on up, and um, as you do, uh, as you guys begin to cross the sound, it's, uh, you're not ex exactly sure what it, you know draws their attention if it's the sound of the movement or you yourselves. But uh, the older gentleman looks up and uh, motions suddenly towards you guys with his cane and, and looks towards Pesh, and you can see there's a little bit of fear. Uh, I mean, towards the the younger individual, and you can see there's a little bit of fear in his eyes. Um, and he, he calls that calls out against the sands. Ugh. Excuse me. Who are you? Who goes there? You're excused. Oh, thank you. Uh, look, I'm gonna one second. Look, what's We are adventurers. No, we are investigators. Uh, uh, A little of both. We seek. No ills with adventurers or investigators. Uh, please. We were simply examining this construct here. Hey, Bill. Yeah? Hey, Bill. Yeah? Uh, once we're in uh, within 30 feet of him... <laughs> Can I cast Detect Thoughts? Oh, yeah, totally. Do you want to try to do so, like, indiscreetly, or...? Um, actually, no. And, uh, right before I walk up to him, uh, I'm going to say, I hope you- I hope you understand the mistrust. But this will not- this is not, uh, something that will hurt you. Then I will start casting. Okay, what is the uh, the saving throw? And uh, sorry, I won't say mistrust a lot. I'll say caution. Key. And the save? Is there a save for it? Uh, uh, it does not look like there is, but let me make sure. Okay, sounds good. And if it is, if there is, it's gonna be uh, wisdom. My save DC. Yeah, and my save DC is eighteen. Doesn't matter. I rolled a two, so either way, you, uh, you, uh, you know, do the actions required to cast a spell, whether it be vocal, somatic, what have you. And um, immediately, you can see the old old man is like, ah, and it gives you this sign and like. It's like magic users, right? He's just like, there's a little bit of like a, a reluctance in him, but you can, in, in that you pick up immediately off of surface, surface thoughts, right? Like, like mm -hmm. definitely has a wariness to, to magic. Um, but you can see that this individual, uh, his name is dancing across it. Shamir, Shamir, that's his name. And Pesh is his grandson. Um, and you can tell that both of them are just, uh, uh individuals from a local tribe that seemed to have stumbled upon this golem and was uh, examining it. You can see that there are these strange thoughts dancing in, in Shamir's head, though. Uh, thoughts of him as a child, of his grandma telling him stories of a golem and of a man in the tightest pants and rippling shirt she's ever seen. And how she led him to... Uh, to this this cavern like area this purple worm territory right and you just like click it clicks and you're like ah oh, shit shamir is somehow related to to this to this entire thing mm. how fucking convenient isn't it <clears throat> um then <laughs> honestly i as i'm hearing these like after i finish and get the general idea right mhm mm I'm going to turn to both Zyla and Rose and just call him out. It would appear that he uh, is related to most likely the grandson of the person who guided Alcazar. And it would end, uh, which appear, which is incredibly convenient. And uh, I will repeat his name and his, uh, was it his son or his grandson? I'm sorry. His grandson. 
uh, his grandson's uh, name to the party members. But I'll turn uh, towards him. If you'd like. And he is understandably wary of magic. Makes sense. We do not mean you any oh. harm. I don't know how you did that, but... Uh... And you hear that the kid finally speaks up and he's like, Calm down, grandfather. These are simply very powerful people and they're exactly what we're looking for. We were just discussing how you were remembering the tales that your grandmother told you about about the secrets that this golem could hold. You know, the prince's golem? Maybe we should help these people. And Shamir's like, no, I'm not sure. And Pesh is like, yeah, we should. Um, I think they need some, you could say, uh, persuasion. Uh, he wants well, to face it. <laughs> but you didn't what? Uh, you see, I didn't take any enchantment spells. Uh, uh, That's fine. I'm very indiscreetly asking for a persuasion check from someone who wants to front the party. Two. Oof. I have a uh, one. My, Oof. my persuasion is eight. <laughs> okay, sounds like so. you're the winner. <laughs> Apparently. Oh, no, Xyla Holy rolled. Shit. She's doing it, and you have advantage because everyone else is helping, so that 19 is fucking okay. great, actually. Nice. Okay, so... Uh, Z Zyla, the, the old man looks towards you, and, like, he just says... Like he just stops and he looks, he just looks you up and down and goes, "I, I think that maybe you're right, Pesh. Maybe these people are strong enough to help us. Um, I, I am, I am Shamir. You're right. I am the grandson of one of the." Guides that originally took, you know, uh, fuck, what's his fucking name? Alcazar to, uh, to where he was going. Um, uh, but first, if, if you truly are to help us, there is something you must do. It is said if you speak the prince's name, uh, the golem will respond. I, I am having troubles remembering his name. Do you guys remember his name? Ah, shit. Your characters do. Go ahead and roll a history check. <laughs> the last time it didn't go so well for me. Yep, we'll see this time. 18 for Rose, 16 for Zyla, 24. For, oh, you all remember. It's uh, Hamukai. Hamukai. Hmm. Well. Interesting. Do you say it? Yes. Uh, definitely. Who says it first? Rose. No way, I think... Roll initiative. Roll initiative, yeah. You guys okay with that? Yeah. Oh, well, oh you just rolled a natural 20 for initiative, Rose, so I guess you got it anyway. Yeah. Why is initiative bonus 9.18? It adds his dexterity bonus as a modifier for ties. Okay. Yeah, I, well, I, I, had, I had turned on the tiebreaker thing, so that's why it's got the decimal there. Yeah. Uh -huh. I always kind of like it because it shows like me a, what your what your dex is. Yeah. yeah, and I have a I have a fucking plus 9 to initiative because I've also got the alert fee. Oh, that makes sense. Well, uh, Rose, you say it first, Hamukai. And as the word leaves your lips, you can see immediately there is a change in the golem who has otherwise been, ex like, it's a half-buried, nine-foot-tall golem with this, uh, like, design on a stone circle on its chest, right? It's like a, a blue circle with these radiating... Um, 
um, radiating eight golden beams radiating out from it, kind of looking like a sun, right? And it just hasn't hasn't moved, hasn't done anything. Its eyes are just kind of faintly blowing glue. But the minute you say that, Rose Hamukai, um, you hear the <laughs> of the golem's head moving, and its face, which had otherwise been locked in like this kind of mopey look, that's the, the best way you could describe it. It looks fucking sad, right? Um, but it moves and it like begins to like smile a little bit and it makes a few hand gestures towards you a couple signs that first maybe you don't recognize um but it like begins to stand up right like and as it does you can see it's like easily 13 14 feet tall this is a massive golem right um and it just kind of like looks there like kind of smiling at you rose just kind of kind of waiting patiently and as that happens Shamir's like oh this is just like the tales it said that Alcazar could also command the golem please let me and Pesh guide you let us take you where Alcazar was going can I do an insight check to see if I'm getting any bad feelings about this guy yeah sure go ahead make an insight check Oh, oh, a natural I one. <laughs> nope. Not a, how can you help with insight anyway? You know, like that's such a that's a, such a niche one. <laughs> but yeah, to each other. you Just fucking feel great. Thing. Also a natural <laughs> one. Good job, Rose. May I attempt? <laughs> Just to see if we can get three. Yeah, sure. Three natural ones. I can't believe you rolled a 17 with your oh natural God. one. Good thing. <laughs> yeah, look, at you rolled it, but that's not the one you rolled. So Zyla, Rose, both of you, even even Baos, you all feel the same way because it's the truth. This dude why, is. Well, hang on. That was a. Um, I rolled a ten. Why is it red I then? Plus. I don't know, but I have a. a oh, probably because it's the lower roll. I don't know, but I have a plus seven to insight. How weird. Yeah. So yeah, I rolled a ten. Okay, well, yeah. 17's better anyway. Yeah, Nathan rolled a 15. Well, both of you guys, regardless of whether you rolled a natural one or you rolled the 23 that Baos rolled, you all feel the same way because Shamir's telling the fucking truth. He feels the same, right? Uh, this dude is very obviously odd that you guys just got this golem to stand up in front of you, and he wants to see it to its end. And you can very like you can read that in the lines that wrinkle his face. Nice. How do you know where we're going? Tales. Tales passed down long through my family. Uh, but we can't... We shouldn't travel now in the sun. Those not accustomed to the heat of the honor rock. Well, it will, if you can tell, pat you dry. And at this point, even within like the five minutes you've been here, all of you are not feeling very good. Like you're very hot. Um, those of you who, who sweat... You are no longer sweating because all of your moisture has been evaporated. Um, and it is it's not going well. And, and he's like, uh, it's not long before night falls. If, if we wait, we can travel in the cold. But if you're in a hurry, we can push forward now. Perhaps nightfall might be a little healthier for us. I agree. We'll wait until nightfall. All right, sounds good. Then you all kind of kind of gather around, and Shamir tells you a little bit um, about what's going on. He kind of tells you about his grandmother and how they had uh, they had traveled uh, towards this kind of like it's it was said to be a sacred uh, a sacred area known as 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 a hall of secrets, and um, it was supposed to hold some of course some sort of secrets, right? And uh, Along the way, you hear that Alcazar was turned away, not not by like this sandstorm that fucking rolled them. That rolled in and it fucking destroyed everything. The camels ran away and it kind of just like, like he said that his grandparents were like the only ones that survived out of like 10 or 12 like guys, right? It was like, it was a terrifying event. It's no wonder that Alcazar turned wow. around. Um, Interesting. And, and again, like you, you hear and he like with the rest of the time before the night falls, you hear tales of the purple worm. You just hear that it has ravaged this place for quite a while. Right. Like it's a it's known in the desert because the desert is is 
it's home and it has grown old here and it's there's it's almost like a its own little deity right like the purple worm um but there's definitely like a fear it's like that fucking purple worm it fucking destroys if you get around it i'm sorry grandfather time <laughs> But eventually the night fall. Fine. Yes. Um, <laughs> Bayos is going to ask if the purple worm can cast magic. Uh, not to his best knowledge. Shamir's like, no, magic. The the devil's fruit. <laughs> Bayos is going to turn and look at him with a very serious face and say, I absolutely agree. <laughs> and he's like, hmm, hmm, hmm. He like he's like oh yeah this guy's on the right level he at least knows he's not sitting here trying to talk shit <laughs> but uh <laughs> yeah much worse in here. Uh, what was that i've seen much more like magic than that i've seen L let me just say that the honor rock this desert here is a wasteland because of magic it's, it's nothing against it, personally. It's just, I've seen what magic can do to a place and to a people. Oh my. Was looking on, was this all the work of the Netherim? Why, yes, it was. Netheril was here. This, this is it. But I can see that the sun has fully fallen and night has come. Perhaps we should quench our fire and begin our journey. It is a long one. Yes, that sounds like an excellent idea. All right. Well then, Milfugs. You, uh... You break is down that camp? That short yeah, sure. It was a short rest. You cast a spell already? Why do you got an arcane recovery? I gotta yeah, be tough. He cast uh, detect thoughts. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, okay. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. All right, then. So eventually you guys um, head on out, right? And as you hit this desert, you can see that um, it is, even at night, it is, it is warm, it's baking uh, from the sun below you. But above you, there's just this constant chill from this open sky. There's no clouds anywhere. There's just stars as far as the eyes can see. And the heat is leaving just as quick as it set in. And it's, it's a weird feeling, like you're mm. freezing up top. But every time you take a step, you're disturbing more sand and more heat kind of pushes up at you. Um... And as you move through this desert, you can feel this, like, this ever-conscious wind that's blowing at your back. And, and Shamir just kind of continues to shake his head as it gets worse and, and worse and more frequent. Until finally, um, as you're moving, Shamir kind of raises his head and he goes, uh, uh, Perhaps we should stop a moment and, well, pray for our ancestors. I think it would make sense to appease the voices before they come. Voices? Y yes, you see. And then it's too late because they come. They're oh. on the wind. There are shrieks. <laughs> but more terrifying. Um, there are shrieks <laughs> of anguish. There are Cries of tortured souls. There are sounds that tear at your heartstrings. And they whip across your face, almost physically carried by the wind. And Shamir just shudders. Oh, no. The voices of the evil wizards endure for eternity. I have told you already that we stand on a cursed city. 
I hope the wind is not an ill omen. Um, how to fight the urge to cast magic in this game. <laughs> what? Gotta fight the urge to cast magic constantly. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, but it, it calms and as just as, as quickly as it came, right? Like just as quickly as the wind built up, it quickly disappeared. And you're left on a clear night. And using the stars, Shamir and Pesh together are able to continue to lead you ever into the desert. You don't know how they're traveling. I mean, obviously it's the stars they keep looking up, right? And I just said it. But like, it is a wasteland out here. There's no roads. There's only remnants here and there of like broken down buildings. Um, and they're constantly having to remind you like, drink, drink, drink. We know it's nighttime, but drink. You're you're dehydrating out here. Um. <laughs> I'll pour water on my face. <laughs> Just uh, did we bring the uh, gold? The gold? The golem. Oh, the golem. Yeah, yeah. The golem is just walking aside, aside you guys. It seemed like the moment rose that you like, you would have easily found this out. Like the moment you moved the way, the golem's like. <laughs> it's like following you and shit. It seems that as you were the first one to speak, uh, the golem is kind of fo literally following you around. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, it just continues to march on beside you guys. Very, like, it's very non-communicative. Um, but it seems to understand a little bit of what's going on, right? Like, it waited with you guys. It, it got up. It walked around holes. It doesn't just fall into them and shit. But, uh, um, it's not sitting there chatting up the weather. <laughs> Eventually, you guys continue through the desert until a shape makes itself clear in front of you. At first, perhaps it is reminiscent of a mirage or something of the sort, but it doesn't go away. And Shamir kind of shakes his head and goes, I don't know what that is. Huh. So you push closer and you can see that sitting atop a um, a very large granite pedestal is a sandstone sphinx. Around the pedestal there are bleached bones, both humanoid and non-humanoid, half buried in the sand. It seems to be staring, frozen, into the night. Well, that looks incredibly dangerous. Uh, how are you lot good at riddles? One more time. How good are you lot at riddles? Huh. Not well. Do you think banishment will be a sufficient substitute? not to be hostile towards it if we can. Noted. Well, if that's... Um, can I... Uh, can I pop a detect magic and uh, basically do a circle around the pedestal? Yeah, of course. Yeah. As the detect magic goes off and you can sense the essence, um, you can definitely tell that, yeah, this is a very magical um, being. It's not the magic like an item or anything this is indeed some sort of magical being held in suspension here and close that the closer you get to it you can realize that this is probably not just a normal sphinx um it is a very male figure figure for the head with flowing um locks but also with this very long beard um and it looks at you um, it doesn't look at you, right? Because it's frozen and, and it's a sand, it's sandstone. It's a sandstone sphinx. But it seems to, like, the eyes almost follow you. Follow You You can see that there's, like, something to it. It is indeed a magical being. And it's almost like it's waiting for something. Well, despite the fact that this is most absolutely a trap, it appears we, we should probably approach. Any suggestions, anyone? How far away is it? 
I mean, uh, close or as far as you'd like. You guys can clear the distance. I mean, you guys probably got up maybe like 100, 150 feet when you saw it. And then I imagine, uh, Bayos, you got close enough to be able to detect magic, which is 30 feet, so... Yeah. Anywhere between there. Uh, right. <clears throat> and if you guys want, go ahead and all of you guys can make a quick uh, investigation check if you guys want to like, or make a, a perception check for me, actually. I think that'll be better. doesn't matter. It's the same skill stat, so... I'll take the investigation. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, I, the perception I, was pretty good too. But yeah, natural twenty Zyla. So, um, Zyla, you notice first, like you look out, and immediately your eyes are drawn to a spot um, at about for an average uh, humanoid creature, which, which you're not. You're much larger, so you have to like look down a little bit, but. Um, you can see that there's a spot that is almost like rubbed clean, like the sandstone has been polished a little bit. Um, and you can only assume that it's probably done from years and hundreds of hands or something touching that area. It is very obviously like less tarnished than everything else. The debate to just walk up and go like touch it is so real right now. <laughs> Do it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna slither my way there and, and touch it. Slither, one, slither my way down. <laughs> okay, and, and and Zyla, how does this sand do for you? You like, are you are you feeling it? Is this a good feeling moving through the sand? Are you hating I'm, it? I'm neutral, cause like I've got scales. I don't have shoes that I have to deal with sand getting into. It just kind of rolls off me. Sure, that's kind of nice. I would kill to not have sand in my shoes. Oh, Sam, I hate sand so much. Mm. Okay, Anakin, <laughs> calm down. So, uh... <laughs> it's the first, but it gets everywhere. <laughs> so, Zyla, as you... The women, but the children, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, Zyla, as you come up to this, this uh, sphinx here, and you reach out, you place one of your hands on it, and, um... Which one? Tell me, is it, like, I want one, like one, two, three, left, right. I'm going to use my right middle hand. Perfect. Cool. Cool. So your hand comes out. <laughs> Very important. Hope you know. Um, and the moment <laughs> you, you touch this area, um, a voice pushes into the center of your skull. Very, very forcefully, Ooh. you could say. It's a very invasive voice. And it just Ooh. speaks immediately. Forked like a serpent's tongue. I spark the thunder's peal. With every stroke, the storm is wrong. Of darkness, by my zeal, what am I? Could we possibly get that posted in chat? Yeah, and I'll, I'll say it again um, for the listeners. Here you go. Uh, in a normal we voice. All, we all hear it, right? No, it's just telepathically straight into Zyla's head. Yeah, um, so sh you would have to say that to them if you'd so wish, but it says forked like a serpent's tongue. I spark the thunder's peal. With every stroke, the storm is wrung of darkness by my zeal. What am I? I I'm going to oh. turn to them. I'm going to tell them that, and then I'm going to ask uh, to see if there's anything like in the book that might help us. Do we still have the book with us? Uh, you don't, yeah. actually. So one of the rules of Candlekeep that uh, Little One would tell you is that books don't leave Candlekeep. Copies aren't made of books in Candlekeep. People don't fucking touch books in Candlekeep unless there's an attendant nearby. You have no clue how how uh, Little One ended up with those books in his hands. <laughs> Weird. Okay. Yeah, they're really serious about that. Like, if they could put it inside of a place where no one could ever read them again, they probably would. So she's already told us uh, the riddle, yeah? Yeah, she's already told you the riddle. Rose speaks up, a bolt of light. A 
do you touch the do you say lightning oh that's the answer not to be rude but how sure are you of that well have you ever seen lightning during a storm it's forked like a serpent's tongue and it comes accompanying thunder this is true I just don't want to have to kill whatever that creature is. Of, of darkness. Oh shit, I just lost the So I'm gonna say lightning. Okay, with your hand still on the Sphinx, you say lightning. And there is a noticeable sound and movement from the Sphinx. Its head just rolls down to look at you. And its eyes glow this bright blue-white color. And you feel this blessing fall over you, Zyla. And you and your allies are all granted resistance to lightning damage for the next ten days. And then... The Sphinx, like, falls to dust in front of you. And it's less like it... It's not like it makes a pile of dust, right? It looks like it literally, like, disintegrates pedestal and all and just disappears into the sand and leaves no trace. Well, that's just nifty. Yeah, except for the bones. (laughs) Great. Fine. I, I'm, uh, please, that went well, uh, uh, but we are close. Uh, Perhaps we I... should press on. Oh, what? Uh, I was going to just look behind us and see if, uh, and I will be making a, dis- a disadvantage this construct. Do not, sorry, Warforged, do not have Dark Major. But can I just see if there's anybody behind us? Like following us or anything? Yeah, sure. Go ahead and make a uh, make a quick perception check with disadvantage. Oh. Dun dun dun. Dun 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 dun. dun. Twelve. Oh. Yeah, I mean, you look around and, yeah. I mean, you don't see anyone, right? But at the same time, you're almost confident that no one's following you because it's been a fucking hell of a journey. Even at nighttime, with these dudes following, like leading you guys through the sand, like you've probably trekked like a decent like. 10 miles through this desert and it is a hard 10 miles. This is soft sand. I don't know if you guys done 10 miles on soft sand before, but it fucking sucks. Yeah. Like you can feel it in your glutes. That's what I'm saying. I can feel it in my glutes. (laughs) Oh yeah. In your glutes, right? (laughs) (laughs) Um, but, uh, yeah. So you're pretty confident that if like, the chances of someone falling you wing out here, very slim. Uh, you seeing someone, chances of that, also very slim with a 12. Also, as long as you guys are within 30 feet of me, you can't be surprised. How Can nice. I... Yep, weapon of warning. We. All right. Well then, shall we continue on? Yes. yes. Dude, I was about to try to throw my ward over um, Zyla if she got zapped. Yeah, I am. I think so. We probably would have all just been zapped. <laughs> I'm glad that didn't happen because you wouldn't have been zapped. You would have had to fight that Andro Sphinx. I was so ready to fight it. Yeah, you were right, too. You knew. Yeah, that was good. You knew it. I looked at it the first time that I read that riddle, and I was all like, uh, "That can't be the answer. That's so simple. Like, like I, not simple, but like, it's too obvious. It feels like the yeah. It feels like it's not the answer. Motherfucker, what is forked? Is it a fork? Is it an actual fork? Just a bunch of fucking silverware just drops out of the clouds during. All right, let's push. Let's push on here. We're almost almost to the next stop. Um, 
the desert evolves around you guys. Um, as you continue to make your way through the sand, you can see that Shamir and Pesh are continuing to use the stars, um, you know, to help with their navigation. And, and in time, um, the desert begins to change. You're no longer on the open dunes, but now moving more towards like a gravelish substance. And then you're on like a, almost like a hard rocky substance. And you're moving through kind of this different area until finally the landscape around you begins to bear the scars of a purple worm's habitation. You can see, very obviously, a complex of caves that has collapsed as the worm created its rubble-filled tunnel. In front of you, you see a crack in the face of a cliff that looks like an entrance to an undamaged cave. And around it, a few 15-foot diameter rubble-filled holes provide clear evidence of a purple worm's passage. Overhead in the night, you can just make out vultures circling slowly, as if anticipating scraps. Ah, um, assuming that, uh, assuming that Bale Five thinks that we are the expected scraps because they're circling us, right? Yeah, they're like circling you guys in the area. Mm. Um, and as you get close, um. Uh, Shamir kind of points a hand out and he goes, uh, as you can see, signs of worm all over. But uh, this is it. This is the cave. It's said that there are secrets within. If, if you can deal with the worms. Bye. And from what you were telling us, we should also expect the largest one here, correct? I think so, yes. Those holes, and he points again to the 15-foot diameter holes, mm -hmm. they can only be my, be made by a gargantuan monster. Right. All right, well. What are we waiting for? <laughs> I just imagine Zyla sitting there like, oh, here's the words purple worm. All of the swords come out. Yep. <laughs> How many swords do you have? I have well, technically a weapon for each hand. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> so and, uh, six hands in total. <laughs> and uh, three of them are scimitars, right? Yeah. Sweet. I the love this picture. Exactly. Someday we're going to have to roll this back and hear like the early tales of Sila growing up. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For now, though, you all press <laughs> on towards what you can only assume to be the entrance of this cave. That's the plan, right? Move on up into the cave entrance? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. As you guys approach, you are immediately hit by this horrid stench. That fills your Ooh. nostrils, um, and uh, Shamir is immediately like a Shamir like kind of covers his face and 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 Pesh, his grandson's like, "Ugh, grandfather, you never told me purple worm dung was so pungent." And it appears that uh, yeah, <laughs> Shamir's all like, "Oh yes, it's it's shitty." That's an understatement. I've smelt worse. <laughs> that is terrifying. I've smelt better. Yeah, and I'm as gonna, you, uh, I'm gonna pop major armor, though. Okay, uh, the psh, clan, translucent uh, armor clashes in around you, um, and you all begin to make your way towards and in further into the uh, cave entrance here. Um, immediately you can see that, uh, there is shitty shit all over, like, and, and it's, like, big, like, the worm dung is, like, like, it's, like, one of them is probably, like, ten feet wide, six or seven feet long, right? Like, they're fucking huge, um, and they're just, like, these wow. long, viscid, rubbery tubes of, 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 of shit. That's all they are. They're just shit. That is one big shit. But... The further you make your way into this shit cave, 
you uh, you can see that the walls are sculpted and chiseled uh, with empty sconces that dot the walls. What? That's a shit show. It's a shit show. Are we sure that the cave isn't just made of shit? I mean, oh god! If you it's waited all... long enough. Wait, the cave's all shit. Always maybe was. All it was. <laughs> maybe this is the bathroom. You never know. Maybe you guys are walking into the dudes like shitter. <laughs> so you guys make your way into this place you can see that this place was obviously had some human habitation at one point right there were like brightly painted scenes and writings that kind of lie all crumbled on the floor which were once walls right before this worm came in and pushed through this area um and let me go ahead and do something here do 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 don't have the maps ready do 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 where is the map? There's a million maps. Okay. Map. 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 Let's see if the uh, let's see if the dynamic lighting works. That's the I'll use the question. I didn't test this before we got going, so we're gonna grab a character. Let's say Zyla. Zyla, you're a good character to grab, right? Bam! Can you see shit on the map? Um, I can't even see my map right now. Perfect. Cool. That means that it didn't work. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> I can see the map, but it's just a black screen. Yeah, that's, what I, that's all I see, too. Okay. Well, give me just a second then, and I will fix that the best way possible, which is showing you guys the entire map. Oh, it's because I don't have you guys have vision. <laughs> But there you go. So you can see that this is the long entrance where that's just full of shit, right? There's just shit everywhere leading up to it. And eventually you come to a cross section um, with a much, much larger tunnel. Again, a large 15 foot diameter tunnel uh, leading left and right. It's like I got a perpendicular angle. Um, and you can, you like look around and you're like, oh, shit, this is definitely passage of the purple worm. And they have kind of almost like split this area in half, right? You can kind of see here in the middle. Um, yeah. And you guys are going to have to crawl through there. You're going to have to either take some time to move that shit or crawl through there. Well, this feels awkward. Push myself feels through. Would it make it larger for the rest? Oh, 100%. You would just need to make uh, a strength check for me. Can I uh, can I help by trying to like uh, push or give her tail leverage if she'd like? Oh, hundred percent, yeah. Make it with advantage if you so wish, Sila. For strength. Yeah, yeah, strength check. Twenty-two. That's good enough. Yeah, you are able to slither right on through there. You're using your hands to kind of like help you move boulders aside and almost making like very minimal noise other than the sound of like the natural sounds of the shifting rocks you create a large enough passage that all of you can easily move up and over and um to the other side of uh of this little place here okay. didn't do oh. yours right okay. all right so as you cross over that barrier and push further into the cave, um, Shamir and Pesh behind you, like pushing in, they're like, oh shit, I hope there's not a worm. Um, <laughs> oh, the, <laughs> oh shit. Uh, the tunnel opens into a cave that is 50 feet long and 30 feet wide, 20 feet tall even. So it's a you know, pretty big area, but that's not what catches your eye. Maybe it's the bats that chitter near the ceiling. Maybe it's the floor that reeks with their fucking shit. More shit. Or <laughs> maybe it's the colorfully painted frescoes that line the walls deeper within the cave on the left and right hand side. You can see that they are very obviously beautifully made mirror. And as Shamir finally wiggles his way into the room, he's one of the last ones. Pesh is helping him through the gravel pile. He goes... Oh, this, these 
are from our ancestors. And he just like moves towards the murals and just like his hands are just going over them, trying to read them. Like, I mean, they're pictures, right? You can read them by, by reading the pictures, but you can see that underneath the pictures, there is a large inscription that is just engraved into the stone itself. And there are, uh, six of them in total. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six of them in total. And just huh. as you're beginning to make your way into this room, just as Shamir is beginning to run his fingers over the murals, you hear <coughs> and a fucking purple worm bursts up from the tunnel that you guys were just hanging out at, right? And it's all like <coughs> and it comes to, uh, to fuck you guys up and that's the first combat we got is you guys versus a fucking purple worm. Uh -huh. Sounds good to me. So hold on just a second. I just want to say that that purple worm is to size. There you go. Now you guys are to size too. You're a large size creature, so you're a little bigger. You need to like squeeze through that hallway. It's probably sucked for you. Feel like we're Absolutely. Missing yeah, we're missing Nathan's. Oh, there he is. No, yeah, you guys are all in here, though. But okay, yeah. So as the worm bursts up through the, the wall, it's like, BAM! Worm time! And Nathan, I need to mess with your character again. It's not really your character. It's just a token. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> hold on. That's because I fucked it up last time. I didn't save it. So yeah, purple worm bursts up. It's like, Rah! And you guys all need to roll initiative. Click your token and then roll initiative. Wait, Nathan. No, okay. okay. But for the rest of you, click your token and then roll initiative. Um, as the purple worm busts up, though, Shamir's like, No! I knew this would happen! And he just, like, runs in with Pesh. Uh, to the far corner back over here. They don't have tokens because I'm lazy. And they're just going to try to hide. <laughs> oh, man. I just opened your character sheet, uh, Baos, and I'm just looking at all the fucking spells that are on here. So many. Yeah. I really hope you use the drag and drop feature. <laughs> Wait. What, is, what the fuck is that? Oh, man. You typed all that in. Oh, no, the yeah. drag and drop, yes. Okay, okay, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had to type a lot of the Unearthed Arcana ones, but... That's fair. Oh, okay. sorry, that's your character sheet. Uh, okay, so now you're good, you can roll your fucking the... shit. Yeah. Yes. It's still funny to see the difference in our sizes. Yeah, isn't it? I'm glad, uh, Zyla, that you chose the, uh, the large uh, feature instead of the medium. I thought that would be a good choice. It like really bugged me about that one because like it explained it as the large creature and then stated that it was medium. Yeah, isn't that so weird? And I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna go with the one that says large because clearly it's a large creature. I'm 20 feet long. Yeah. It's the same uh, thing with centaurs. I don't get it. Like centaurs are also, I mean, they had the thing that's like, um, I'm a, I'm a like a large sized creature for carrying capacity and shit, but I'm like, oh, why aren't they? Yeah. They're like horses. They should be big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking minotaurs and goliaths are like that, too. Yeah. This is our D&D &D oh, podcast yeah, where we complain. Fuck off, <laughs> wizards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell, wizards. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. Okay. So now the question is... <laughs> Who's gonna die? That's the question. Oh, no. yeah, yeah, yes, that is definitely what I was thinking, Bill. The worm is going to die. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. I just rolled a natural two for the worm. Oh, wait, no, I rolled a natural four, and it has a minus two. So, so I rolled a two. So for you, uh, and if you guys want, for, you know, those who don't see the token super great, here is what you guys are up against, this wonderful purple worm that is a... A massive Ooh. creature. It's just like 
It's fucking huge. It's just long and literally purple and covered in spines. Probably like your okay, favorite toy. Bam! <laughs> Sorry. I'll leave now. This D and D game brought bad. to you by <laughs> brought to you by uh, what, what, what's that company that makes the um? It's gone. Yeah, never, never mind. I, <laughs> no, I mean I'm sure you guys don't. I'm, yeah, the uh, the monster dildos. Oh, oh my god! Oh yeah! Bad dragon. Bad dragon. Bad dragon. Yeah. I should change. I'm gonna change the name of this Purple Worms initiative to Bad oh Dragon. Oh my god! Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Hey man. Uh, you know the expression. Anything's a dildo if you're brave enough. We have to be really, <laughs> really brave. Right. Okay. All right. Put the cactus down. <laughs> so I gotta change his name and then. Hey, Dil, what size class would you say that uh, that that their uh, that their giant worm is? Good question. Let's find out. I think Pretty it sure. is a gargantuan mark monstrosity, like I fucking said. Yeah, I was gonna guess huge or gargantuan. This gargantuan. <laughs> That's a that looks fun. It's a big one. It's a biggie. Yeah, so it's a good old biggie. And uh, I think we'll go ahead and uh, call it there. This one shot just turned into a two shot, y'all. Well, as long as the purple worm doesn't two shot us or one shot us. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. Uh, but you guys are doing well. You guys are like halfway through. You guys have made it. This is good rolling. There's only a purple worm between you guys and salvation. So um, next time we'll pick up with a purple worm fight. Uh, but until oh, then, yeah. I hope you had fun. Why don't you go ahead and say goodbye, everybody? Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Oh, look. <laughs> oh, look. A Bye. friend. Hey. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I got off work at nine. I was watching something since then. Thank you. Uh, no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> now we all oh, know man. I have like superior initiative and can't be surprised and shit. Let's see just how badly I actually suck in combat. Yeah, just wait <laughs> until uh, the purple worm eats you. <laughs> yep. I I love worms. Dylan can attest to my love of worms. Yes, I can. <laughs> I'll fucking try and pull a Drax and just like cut my way out from the oh, inside. God. Hell yeah! Oh, uh, yes. speaking of, speaking of which, uh, can I get everyone's opinion? Uh, I was the first thing I was gonna do was a enlarge reduce. Should I reduce the worm or enlarge uh, Zyla? Reduce the worm. Ooh. That would be an epic fight if you if you enlarged uh, our own personal general Grievous here. Yeah, see, reduce the worm is the practical choice, but like, enlarged right? party member is the fun choice. <laughs> True. She, yeah, she like, from an epic fuck, like, as long as there's room, I, I, I vote enlarge Xyla. Kaiju battle. I am so okay with being turned into a giant version of myself. So is it is it one one size class? Is that what enlarge does? Yep. Yeah. So you would go so from she... large to huge? Uh -huh. Yep. Oh my lord. What is that, like 30, and 20 all... feet, 30 feet? <laughs> what level yeah. right well, levels that's go? That's level it's, one. Uh, right? uh, no, it's second. Damn. I can't cast it. Fuck. <laughs> Are you <laughs> thinking about chaining it? Yeah. yeah oh my god. Actually enlarge her one size and reduce the purple worm one size. Oh my god. Are they be the same size? Exactly. Oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> Actually, technically, I could still cut my way out from the inside. I just have to ghost walk inside of it. Yeah. You know, that does help that you have that ability to m become a ghost. Exactly. <laughs> for, for 10 minutes, I can be Spoopy Ghost Rogue. <laughs> or Spoopy Ghost Rose. Whichever. Ooh. So while we got you here, Ricky. Yes. Friday? <clears throat> I was hoping to do it this Friday. Is that? Uh, 
I might have to push it back another week because I've been working all week. That's fair. Um, and I, I've prepared a little bit, but like a lot of it's already like pre-prepared. Oh yeah, in the module. So I don't, yeah, that's I don't need to mess with too much. I don't like I don't have to put in my own maps or anything, so that's pretty nice. I know, nice. right? Uh, that makes it easier. Yeah, but what you uh, running? I'm I'm hoping to do it do the first one this this Friday with the first group of three. That would be fun. Yeah. It's, the, it's the crystal light one shot, right? Yeah. Camp Clearwater Massacre. Oh, yeah. I remember Wait, you just call it the, cli- the crystal light? Crystal, uh, crystal light. Oh, crystal light. Okay. <laughs> uh, but let me... Oh, I'm going to put an invite into the uh, free action Friday right now. Ooh. And then I'll try to get everybody characters Come on. that joins. That includes you, Maul. <laughs> you snapped. Somebody got called out. Come on. Bop. Oh, I'm going to be the first. I'm clicking it. Yeah! Oh, shit. First. I'm going to post a new topic that just says first. First. <laughs> 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 yeah so Lauren, go inside i i still have to do like some some reading because i gotta do i gotta know like what i'm doing <laughs> while i'm dming it <laughs> swinging it you don't yeah, need to do cool. that you watch me do this i love <laughs> winging it you got i gotta be honest i love winging i love winging it <laughs> But I at least want to know a little bit. So. That's fair. Oh, God. Yeah, that... Inside yeah, your little feathered dinosaur? I'm hoping for, <laughs> for this Friday, but I'll let you guys know if we're going to have to push it back a week. Okay, sounds okay. good. And then the Friday we do it, it'll be the first group of three. However, we decide to split the groups up. And then the next Friday hey, we'll do another group of three. Just so you know, Dylan, in case you want to be there to stream it or watch or anything. I do. I want to be there to stream it. Is that okay? Yeah. Cool. Shut your mouth while we're playing. I will. I'll just stay <laughs> muted. <laughs> <laughs> no, just hear and comment on everything. <laughs> yeah. I'll turn my mic on. You shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I'll turn my mic on on the stream, but you guys won't hear it on Discord, and it'll just be me like commentating over everyone else. <laughs> like, like a fucking wrestling match. Oh yeah! <laughs> Give him the so chair. Like, like when the monk fucks, fucking punches a dragon. RKO out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ex- I'm excited to see how this is run. I'm like, I'm curious if it's like gonna be like this slasher dude on the front, or if it's gonna be like other people. Like if it's gonna be like a lake monster or some shit. I actually have to watch. Uh, somebody actually DM it so I can see their style. That's what I do every time. Yeah, just kind of get a hint of how I'm supposed to run it. Because uh, it's supposed to just be like 5th edition D&D. Like, you got all the rules of 5th edition D&D, but how am I going to flavor that in like a horror aspect? Mm-hmm. That's that's what I've been thinking. Oh, um, uh, Van Richtem's Guide actually has creatures now that are basically horror movie slashers. Yeah, Is Van Richten's out? Yeah, oh, yeah it's, it's been out. Shit. Yeah. Wait, I get, um, both me and James have a copy. Yep. Is it pretty? Yeah. It pretty well pisses me off. But, yeah. <laughs> oh, I remember this. Yeah, uh, you, you've heard me rant about it already. The The cool thing, though, about the Camp Clearwater Massacre is that it's got a night and day system that I'm going to have to kind (laughs) of work in somehow. Okay. Yeah. It's always tough. I'm trying that in the Bloodborne thing. Yeah, there's there's still things I got to read up on and Things I gotta make sure that I'm doing right while I'm DMing it, but it'll be fun. It'll be it'll be a fun one shot. I'm excited. (sighs) 
So yeah, everybody that's interested, just click that link and join up, and I'll slap you guys some character sheets. Woo! Woo! And, uh, click on that link. Yeah, I'll tell the others to do the same, and then we'll roll it from there. Dylan, you're already in, right? Yeah, I am. Can I give you a character sheet, please? Hey guys, I think I am going to hop off. I eat. Right Have a good I night. Eat. You too. Yeah, thanks for playing yeah. tonight. Fun. <laughs> Alright, I think bye. 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 I think uh she'll hop off as well. Uh but Ellie, while you're still here. Yes. Uh are you still down to do the, the twin drow thing for the uh the uh, clear water camp clear water? Yeah. Yeah, I was still down to do that. I mean I I say that kind of hesitantly because I only had one day off. Okay. So pass the fuck out. Fair enough. But I might also just muster through it because I've been having a lot of fun with like these little one shots. <laughs> They're cute. It's a blast. I like it. It's a Baja <laughs> blast. Ah, that's the best Mountain do. Now you have my interest. <laughs> <laughs> it's the okay Mountain do. Baja Blast, you say. <laughs> okay. uh, good night, everybody. Night. Good night. Um, James, hey, Ricky. I don't know if uh, you expressed interest for this yet or not. Uh, no, I normally have my son on Fridays. Okay. Thank you, Just though. making sure so I don't leave anybody out. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. What's up, hey, Ricky. Though? I yeah. do you have the fifth edition character sheet set to default on the thing? Uh, it should be. I might have to double check and make sure. Okay. Because I don't have a character sheet. Oh, but let's see. Module's like, all you gotta do is drag and drop the module, not anything else. <laughs> <laughs> he lied! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure if I had to, like, open up one of these to, like, claim it or anything, which I now know I don't have to. And so I, like, made a game real fast, like, with the module in it, and then I deleted it immediately. I'm like, okay, now it's hopefully saved. But I knew I couldn't look at it. I thought I just saved those changes. I clicked save changes. Settings save success. It worked. All right, now leave me alone. Thank you. I will. Okay, Sorry. So now you can see it. Yeah, let me just close this real fast. I can open it back up. Cool, cool. Give Nathan his. And then I got to pull up my reroll. Pull up reroll because that's what my character's on. Reroll.io. There's a brown bear. Oh, that's my brown bear. <clears throat> Get started on web. Log in. Okay. So now you and Nathan have character sheets. I was going to be like, no, he doesn't. I can't see his character sheet. But of course I can't see his character sheet. Jahan. You should join my Camp Clearwater game also so I can give you a character sheet. Is Nathan still with us or is he gone? He's gone. Oh, he's, he's fucking gone. He left. He's in the roll 20, but yeah, he's gone. Thanks for tuning in. It was nice to see you. Yeah, I was sitting there. I was like, worms? <laughs> <laughs> I like worms. And I was like, I was like, is that riddle answer really lightning? I know, right? Isn't that so funny? A level 15 like, riddle by an Andro Sphinx. Yeah, that's, I was like, what the fuck? Maybe it's not a very imaginative. 